Nice and wet out this morning. Man, let's see what we got going on. So I was looking on our uh, temperature system and I got a circuit that's running cold, C11. So what I wanted to do was come over here. Let's see, this is rack C. Boom. Come over here, check the CPR, make sure that we're not running too cold on this thing. So if we're looking, we got, thankfully these ones are all numbered. If not, we could just count them, but we got circuit 11 for Delhi. Right? And what I want to do, because it's the whole circuit running cold, I didn't even worry about looking at the cases. I just came straight up here, straight up to the rack. So let's see. Now these cases do have doors, so they're Hussman cases. They're like D5 cases with doors on it. Um, and from what I've found, those cases run. So typically your rule of thumb for EVAP temp is about 10 degree TD, right? So if, I, if I'm wanting a 35 degree discharge air, I would set it to a 25 degree coil. Um, with these doors on it, I've seen it where it's like three to five degree TD. Right, so you set them a little bit higher. So this one's sitting at 72. Let's see, I think this rack should have a little PT chart on it. Yeah, right here. So we go over to 72. That's a 32 degree coil. And it's still running a little bit cold. So what I'll do is I'll bump it up to 35. Let's do... Let's do 34, let's set it to 76 and see what happens. And then I'll also check that defrost on it and make sure we're running different, decent defrost. So, let's crack this guy. And as I adjust this, this thing should adjust a little bit. So, Let's make sure it's not a defrost real quick. Go to circuits. Tape down. C11 defrost. There's one thing you'll probably hear me say multiple times. Whenever you're trying to do something to a circuit, it always seems to be in defrost. Should have checked that first, but that's okay. Uh, this keyboard don't want to work with me. All right, so let's go into C11. Let's take it out of defrost. I guess while I'm here, I'll check the defrost settings. So typically what I'll do is I'll set these for once a day at 90 minutes, right? Um, that's just with doors. That's with the doors on. That's what we were doing when we were starting up a lot of the uh, supermarkets. When we were doing putting doors on, when we were retrofitting doors on, that's what we were doing it was once a day for 90 minutes and it seemed to work just fine. So that's what I'm gonna change this to right now. So one, we're gonna do one hour, 30 minutes. All right, so off cycle, one hour, 30 minutes, which is 90 minutes. Press enter, save it in there. And then we got once a day. Let's see if it comes out of defrost. Nope, so how to get these out of defrost, you highlight the circuit. So where it says C11, highlight it, press enter, go down to manual defrost. Nope, that ain't it. Press enter, go down to manual defrost. I always just do look up. And then you can select whatever you want to do, whether you want to put it into defrost and then in manual mode, enter through it, and then it'll go back into refrigeration. So now we come back over here. Let's see what this thing drops to. So now you can see, man, I adjusted this a little bit too. I wish I would have seen that it was in defrost before I turned it. Let's see what this thing settles at, and then we'll make an adjustment based off of that. It's been running for a minute, 
So you can see we're at 55, 6, 7, so 57 PSI on this EPR, right? And if we come over here to our PT chart, we go to 57, so 56 is 20, 50, so 57 would be like 21. Okay, so general rule of thumb, if we're going 10 over, that's gonna be a 31 degree discharge air, right? Like I said, with these doors, I've seen it where it's like three to five degree uh, TD. So if I want a 35 degree discharge air, I want like a 30 degree coil. So if I come over here, that means that I wanna set this at 70 degrees to meet a 30 degree coil, right? And that's how these work. All you're doing is you're twisting this nut right here, this bolt. This nut is just a locking nut on here. You're twisting this bolt. There's a diaphragm in here that you're basically pressing on as you open and close that bolt. So that bolt is putting pressure and then taking away pressure, pushing on that diaphragm, which then lets more or less refrigerant through as you open and close this bolt, as you adjust this bolt in and out, right? And since pressure is directly related to temperature, I can see what my pressure is and I can know what my evaporator pressure is, right? So I want to take this up to 70. So I want to take this bolt and I want to tighten it. So righty tighty. And it should adjust pretty quick as I'm moving it. So this one might be a little oversized because it took a big turn in order for it to move. And now you see it's slowly going up. So this one, I'm gonna have to watch for a while because now this thing's slowly gonna creep. So this EPR is probably oversized. And the way that you know is if you have to make big adjustments on the bolt and it's little adjustments on the gauge, it's oversized. If you make little tiny adjustments on the gauge, or on the bolt and that gauge jumps around, right? It makes big adjustments on the gauge. Your EPR is undersized, okay? So what I mean is if I give this thing a little tweak, boop, and this thing jumps a lot, like a lot, a lot, your EPR is undersized. I just had to turn this a lot and now it's barely giving me little adjustments, right? That means this thing's probably oversized. What you wanna see is uh, an adjustment here should be equal to an adjustment on your gauge, right? It should be proportional the amount that you adjust on your bolt and what happens on your gauge. It should be proportional. Now I'm gonna have to sit on it and watch it, so we'll see what happens. All right, let's see. Still trying to dial this thing in. Last time I moved this thing, it did. It went a little crazy. So you see, I'm tightening this. Nothing's moving. So. Look at that. Look how much I'm moving that thing, there's nothing happening. So I wonder if this thing's sticking. Sometimes you gotta loosen her up a little bit. And then obviously this valve is gonna get replaced now since I've had to do all that. Um, Cause there's something going on to where it's not, it's not adjusting right. I mean, you can see, I'm cranking on this thing and there's nothing happening. That thing should be moving. I just gave this thing like a full turn and it barely moved. Okay, we go some more. That's two turns, still hasn't moved. So, either my gauge is jacked up or this thing's jacked up. Which, my gauge is good. So, what I'm gonna do is take this back out 
those two turns because I guarantee this thing's gonna creep up. One, two, but you can see we're still at like the same spot. Oh, now it's coming down a little bit. So yeah, this thing's acting funky. I'm gonna give it some more time to set. I just, uh, the store just let me know about another case that's running warm over here. So I'm gonna go downstairs and look at that while this thing kind of adjusts. And then I'll look into replacing this with a new one. Um, I'll get it ordered and we'll see what we can do. Let's see, what is this one right here? Let's see, this one's a five, a five seven. So port size, pipe size, five seven. So this thing's already pretty small. It might just be stuck in there. Might just be sticking. There you go, I'm gonna turn this. All right, I'm gonna let this thing sit. I'm gonna go downstairs, check out that other case that's running warm. Let's go see what's going on with it. All right, so let's go over how to size these valves real quick. Um, you'll need two things. You'll need this catalog right here made by Sporlin. So this goes over your ports, your sports, your check valves. Um, you go through, this is, you know, it tells you everything that we're looking at here table of contents i don't know why i didn't just say that um and then the other thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need an r6 so that is your refrigeration schedule and i should have one for this store 588 r6 okay Second thing you're gonna need is this R6. So this is what they look like. Usually they're up in motor rooms. Um, I've seen them a lot of times where they're posted on the walls, but this gives you everything you need to know about your racks. And I'm trying to see how I zoom in a little bit. Uh... Okay, so you can see we have rack A, rack AR, rack B, right? You can see these are all the circuits. So circuit one is 24 doors of ice cream, it's grocery, EVAP temp, your BTU, your load, your type of defrost, okay? This tells you everything about the rack. These are how racks are set up is based off of these R6s. Okay, so if we're looking at C11, which is down here, and we're looking at, um, a 32 degree evap temp, right? And it looks like we have a couple different cases that are 3.6 and 2.4 BTU. So if we add that up, that's six uh, tons or 6,000 BTU. So it's half a ton. So when I go to sizing this valve, I'm going to come down. This is R404. So I'm looking at my sport and then I'm looking at the refrigerant type. So I'm gonna come down, I'm gonna find 404 and we're looking at tons. Now the existing valve is a 5.7. So it's a 7 eighths pipe. That doesn't seem right. That seemed bigger than 7 eighths. I'll have to look again, but we're looking at, so you have your EVAP temperatures and pressures, right? So for that case, we're looking at an EVAP temp of 32 degrees, right? So we'll size it at 30 degrees, okay? And then what we're looking for is half a ton. So really, our half ton is right here. So what we need is if you look up, we need a port size of three and then that existing line size of seven. Okay, so what we need is a sport two, three, seven. And that's kind of how you size those. You're looking at these pressures, that's half a ton. That's a ton and a half. Port size is three, which is three eighths port. Pipe size is seven, seven eighths pipe. And then all you gotta do is call United, tell them you need a sport two, three, seven, and they should be able to get it to you. All right, let's see where this thing's at. So we're right at about 70, uh, which what is 70? What was that, like 30? 
So 70 is 30 degrees. So what I think happened with this, because this is a 5.7 valve, which is already pretty small. And we looked at that chart. Um, so more than likely what happened is before the doors were put on, the evap temp for those cases was probably a plus 20 suction or like a plus 22. So they put that 5.7 valve on there. And then what happened is they put the doors on which then changed that uh, suction temperature to 32 degrees. So now this valve is oversized and it's struggling to hold, right? That's why I was able to make those big turns and barely anything was happening here. This valve is oversized. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call, get this thing ordered, and then we'll come back and we'll replace it. And yep, that is seven eighths, okay. So yeah, I'm gonna get this thing ordered. It's out of state, but we'll come back and I'll make another video replacing that thing. But um, until then, that's all I got for right now. As always, I appreciate the support. Make sure you like, subscribe, share to somebody who you think might need the videos, who you think might enjoy them. And uh, let me know what y'all wanna see in the comments. So yeah, thank you, later.